Kingdom Come Deliverance is a historical role-playing video game released in February 2018. Pitched as a strong story rooted in the height of the Middle Ages, brought to life in all its glory, the game sought to offer an experience as authentic as possible based on actual historical events. The developers of Kingdom Come, Warhorse Studios, are based in Prague and the team's reverence for the history of Bohemia is obvious. However, while the game receives acclaim for its attention to period-specific detail, many critics drew attention to the treatment, and often absence, of characters who are not white Christian men. These criticisms were compounded by the political views of the creative director Daniel Vavra, an outspoken critic of feminist media and portrayals of ethnic diversity in historical fiction. The debate surrounding Kingdom Come Deliverance has never been truly resolved, and probably will not be during this video. The questions it poses around reconciling historical accuracy in pop culture and depictions of diversity in history are long-standing issues, frequently raised, but infrequently explored in depth. However, there are many specific tropes featured during the game that stand in glaring opposition to the developer's goal of creating an authentic portrayal of medieval life. Questions must therefore be asked about why some aspects of historical accuracy are deemed to be sacrosanct, whereas some are deemed to be less important. Kingdom Come places a significant amount of emphasis on ensuring realism in its mechanics. Fighting in plate armour is cumbersome, and it is nigh on impossible to win a fight when you are outnumbered. Trade-specific skills such as alchemy and smithing must be learned, and historical towns and buildings are recreated with an impressive eye for detail. Historical events that define the period, such as the power struggle following the death of Charles IV and the growth of the Hussite movement, are woven into the plot in a fairly organic manner. However, this superficial feeling of simulating the life of a 15th century peasant is a facade that hides some glaring leaps in historical logic. The protagonist of Kingdom Come Deliverance is Henry, a blacksmith's apprentice who rises up through medieval society to become a competent soldier trusted by the High Lords of the Holy Roman Empire. While Henry's character arc fits neatly into Joseph Campbell's archetypical hero's journey, it is an extraordinarily implausible portrayal of a medieval peasant. Early on in the story, Henry interrupts a group of noblemen and offers them his service. While some of the noblemen are dismissive of Henry, with one in particular treating him with open hostility, Henry nonetheless is accepted into the retinue of the nobles. In his exploration of the peasantry under Habsburg rule, Hermann Rebel claims that the peasants were perceived as an unrestrained rebellious rabble by the nobility, and that representatives of the peasantry were not allowed to meet their prince in person. In the game, the distance between the nobility and the peasantry is ignored in favour of situating the player closer to the grand imperial conflict the game is so interested in showing. While Rebel's research primarily focuses on Austria some 200 years after the events depicted in the game, relations between the nobility and the peasantry in Bohemia during the 15th century would have been worse, not better. Not only does the game ignore the realities of social stratification present in medieval Europe, it presents an ideal of social mobility that was completely absent during the period. Henry primarily gains favour with the Bohemian nobility as a result of his prowess in battle. While Henry begins the game as a poor fighter, through persistence and training he is eventually able to defeat his enemies. However, medieval Bohemian peasants were considerably shorter and weaker than nobles or professional soldiers. A 2013 study explored the link between poor living conditions and disruption to biological homeostasis during the growth and development phase of medieval peasants in Bohemia. While the study found that the link between rural upbringing and stature was overstated, poor nutrition, disease and socio-economic circumstances enfeebled peasants regardless of where they lived. The idea that Henry could become a great warrior and defeat knights and professional soldiers is extremely far-fetched. While Warhorse Studios have clearly put a lot of time into studying medieval combat, they spent less time considering what kinds of people were involved in that combat and how successful they would have been. An even more egregious instance wherein social stratification in medieval Bohemia is ignored occurs when Henry learns to read. Literacy was an incredibly important part of medieval Europe's power structure, according to Franz H. Baumol. He suggests that the ability to read and write in Latin was not only a signifier of social class, but a key factor that enabled the nobility and the clergy to enforce their power over the peasantry, with the former enacting laws and the latter spreading the word of God. Kingdom Come Deliverance understands that literacy was an important determinant of medieval social status, and includes a mission where Henry learns to read Latin in an afternoon. Even ignoring the implausibility of this lightning-fast learning process, it ignores the reality of peasant illiteracy. According to Baumol, the vast majority of people in the 15th century were illiterate. This was primarily because many people did not need to engage with the written word, and instead relied on an oral culture to disseminate information. These are just a few of the countless examples of Kingdom Come Deliverance willfully ignoring the heavily demarcated social boundaries of medieval European society so it can tell a hero's journey story. This suggests that in the minds of the developers there is a hierarchy of importance when it comes to historical accuracy. 
the brutish and short life of peasants is less important than character growth and the progression of gameplay mechanics. However, some elements of historical accuracy are deemed to be very important. Paramount among these is ensuring the absence of non-white, non-Christian characters. Kingdom Come's creative director Daniel Vavra has been vocal on social media regarding his opposition to what he perceives as tokenistic representations of black and minority ethnic characters in historical fiction. The notion that medieval Europe was devoid of black people is a fallacy, with dark-skinned people such as North African Moors frequently depicted in art during the late Middle Ages. However, to Vavra's credit, during this time period people of African origin were most commonly found in southern European port cities, such as Venice and Lisbon, far from Bohemia. However, given the liberties taken regarding the social stratification in medieval Bohemia, this seems like a strange hill to die on. Additionally, there is strong evidence that 15th century Bohemia was a multicultural and ethnically diverse state. In a 2019 paper, Matthias Hart explains how the policies of Soboslav II encouraged migrants to Bohemia during the 12th century. At this time, Bohemia was primarily comprised of ethnic Czechs and Germans, but with a significant Jewish community and some long-distance traders. In fairness, Kingdom Come Deliverance does present the tension between the Czech and German communities in Bohemia via the character of Deutsch. However, the game does not depict Jews, Moors, or any other ethnic group not native to Bohemia. There is one exception to this rule, and the depiction of this group is particularly troubling. The Cumans were a group of nomadic Turkic people who settled in Hungary following the Mongol conquest of the Kievan states in the late 13th century. In the game, the Cumans are presented as a bloodthirsty foreign army that wreaks havoc across Bohemia on the behest of King Sigismund. While the writings of prominent Hungarian historian Istan Vasari supports the depiction of Cumans as raiders and mercenaries, the game portrays the Cumans in a reductive and one-sided manner. The Cumans were not some random foreign force employed by Hungary to destabilise Bohemia. They were a group that shared a lineage with the nobility of Bulgaria, who were invited into Hungary following their displacement at the hands of the Mongols. Neither were they an exclusively martial people. Sylvia Kovac describes how the Cuman chieftain Bortz convinced 15,000 of his people to be baptised in order to ease their assimilation into Hungarian culture. These nomads may have been capable warriors, but they were also a distinct culture with goals beyond raiding and pillaging. As no human characters, or indeed any non-white, non-Christian characters, are explored with any depth, we are offered no insight into their culture or history. While the Bohemian peasantry may well have viewed the Cumans as bloodthirsty foreign invaders, the game only shows their perspective and the effect is to present the Cumans as an other and a valid target for the player's revenge. The reductive portrayal of the Cumans, combined with the out-of-hand dismissal of ethnic diversity in medieval Bohemia, would suggest that the decision not to portray non-white characters has more to do with contemporary nationalist politics rather than historical accuracy. Daniel Vavra is not only a critic of what he perceives as tokenistic ethnic diversity in media, he has also used Twitter to denounce feminist critiques of pop culture. Therefore, it would be interesting to explore how Kingdom Come Deliverance portrays women, a group that were systemically oppressed in medieval Europe and therefore underrepresented in history. While Kingdom Come is primarily interested in men and their stories, the game actually spends a lot of time with its female characters, primarily through the Women's Lot storyline. This storyline features Teresa, a miller's daughter who loses her family during a Cuman raid. Teresa is presented as an independent and capable woman who is a valued member of her father's enterprise. Sheila Ogilvie and Jeremy Edwards suggest in their research paper on female serfdom in Bohemia that while women were absent from some sectors of the economy, such as arable cultivation, they did work in pastoral agriculture and as traders, with women working in these sectors often gaining a reasonable degree of autonomy. They go on to claim that this could have led many women to reassess the institution of marriage, as their economic opportunities outside of marriage could have been preferable. This was a trend observable in medieval England, where increasing demands for female labour led to a decrease in marriage rates. This echoes Theresa's storyline, wherein she is reluctant to allow her father to marry her off to one of the townsfolk as she values her independence as a single woman. While the game's depiction of some women as active participants in Bohemian society is commendable, it does miss the mark in some areas. Women were a key driver in the Hussite movement, which is referenced in-game when Theresa and Henry discuss Jan Hus's sermons in Prague. John Clarson suggests that women in particular were drawn to Hus's message as it spoke to their particular societal concerns. Women felt excluded from the public sphere, so Hussites encourage women to become more involved in Bohemian religious life. Hussites were also opposed to treating women as sex objects, which offered women the opportunity to be taken more seriously in the public sphere. However, these factors were not raised in game, with Henry instead suggesting that women were interested in Hus's teachings because he was attractive. This not only undermines the female characters presented in game, but it prevents the game from engaging with many of the systemic ways in which medieval bohemian society oppressed women. 
The game also presents several opportunities for Henry to engage in premarital sex. Not only does this ignore the general reality of religious life in medieval Europe, wherein fornication was a sin that would carry severe punishment, but it ignores many women's attitudes towards sex. While Clarsen argues that sex outside of marriage was perceived as a significant problem in medieval Bohemia, this was primarily due to the promiscuity of men. The appeal of Jan Hus's teachings to women was predicated on the perception that men were oversexed and treated women poorly. The game, however, ignores this in favour of presenting Henry as a rakish ladies' man. In one instance, he even seduces the wife of a nobleman, showing yet again a disregard for the feudal class system. Like with so many other of Kingdom Come's historical inaccuracies, the game views characterization and relatable plotting as more important than the reality of medieval life. When compared to many of its peers, Kingdom Come Deliverance can legitimately claim to be the most authentic historical video game ever made. The game's version of 15th century Bohemia is more tactile than any textbook or documentary, demonstrating how powerful the medium of video games can be as an immersive educational tool. However, while it might succeed as a digital equivalent of the colonial Williamsburg-style living museum, its drawbacks lead us to difficult questions. Can linear narrative mediums reconcile engaging narratives with historical authenticity? And to what degree should we allow our understanding of the world today to colour our interpretations of the past? Inevitably, elements of myth will infect history when it is depicted in pop culture. The real lives of medieval peasants would not make for compelling entertainment. Which facts we choose to portray and which facts we ignore, and why we make these choices, are crucial to reconciling the disconnect between entertainment and authenticity. I hope this video has taught you something new. If there are any questions, please leave a comment or reach out to me on Twitter. If you require further assistance regarding academic writing, history lessons or English comprehension, you can find my tutoring profiles below.